gooned out, you know what I mean? Dark Low came home, so I had to do it. Mm. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. What up, peace, everybody? It's your boy Universal, aka Wax. Brokers podcast, you know. The best podcast you never heard of. Typical dental thieves. As you can see, we're in a new location today. Mm. We had a little bit of money to spend. A couple dollars, nothing crazy, like like thirty dollars. So mm. shout out to my man Undot down at Unknown Clothing here in New Britain. He let us come film out here at this at his spot. You looking to get fly for the holidays, get fly for the weekend, get fly so you can go get some buns, or just to get fly, period. Make sure you come down to Unknown. This That's is where you fact. need to be. That's a fact. Local dudes, good dudes. Him and his him and his den of thieves. Um, how long we known Makai? I, I can say damn near my whole life at this point. But uh, he's a good guy. Shout out to DJ M. Dot. You know, he's going to be on here in a minute. Um, but, you know, typical Den of Thieves. To the left, I got the one and only. It's your boy, Stevan Ray. You know I don't play. Or, you know, I do play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was born in May. You know? Merry Christmas, though. <laughs> mm. To the right of me, we got the one and only. Mm. CT's best. Mm. Independent. Mm. Pass me the big mic. Yes, sir. Give him the big mic. Splendid. Pass me. Mm. Mr. DCYOP, you know it's me. If it's fly, Ooh. you know it was designed by me. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Word. So we got, we got a lot of stuff to talk about um, today. You know, I got the mask down. Like I said, Dark Lowe's home. Um... J. Royale, he got me feeling like I so should be running around right like this. Into it. How does Hold that on. make you feel that Dark Lowe's home? Mm. I'm happy because I really like Dark Lowe's energy. Mm-hmm. You know, especially him, him and V. Don link up. Link up. Um, it's amazing. So I'm happy that he's home. You know, hopefully he can stay out of trouble. But I just want to hear some more, some more of him and V. Don on the record to get together. So okay. between, um, you know, him, J. Royale, and then Ransom's new project. I just it just it just only felt right to have this down. I ain't about this life, but you know, <laughs> I'm a family man. I'm, I'm a square. I'm trying to live that square life, but it just felt yeah. right. You know what I mean? I just might do it in the gym later. You yeah, made very well there. What made you go with the lime green joint though, son? Why not? You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Why just not? why not? It was one of those situations. <laughs> it just stood out to me, like you yeah. know, just imagine somebody walking down the street and you just. Yo, why you got a fucking highlighter ski mask on? Uh, so people say, hey, don't fuck with me. Exactly. Okay. That's, that's exactly what that is right there. Okay. Um, so what have you guys been listening to? You know, like we said last time, it's been very hard to keep up with the music. Actually, you know, before we jump into that, let's let's get M-Dot over here. Yeah, yeah I know he don't want to be on camera, but we're going we gonna to set it off for him because M-Dot's on the music scene, too. <laughs> Let's go ahead, M. Dom. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself to the people. He had some beats banging when we came in this joint. <laughs> DJ M. Dot, M. Dot Live, uh, owner, co owner of Unknown Clothing, 18 Main Street, New Britain, Connecticut. I'm here, man. What's going on? Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. So, M. Dot, uh, you know, you've been DJing, you've been on the DJ scene for years. Um, obviously, with COVID and all this, you know, we kind of talked about it, just how that whole game has changed, you know, off camera a little bit. Um, but what, what's the rotation for you? What are you listening to? Uh, what are you checking for? You know, what's got your ear these days? Um, I'm super heavy on uh, uh, the Benny Bush, the Benny the Butchers in the world, the West Side Guns. Um, you had the whole camp in this joint not too long ago. Yeah, it felt man. Like yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yo, and Word. it's crazy. Before you know things got hot with Benny, um, he was actually scheduled to come back. So yeah, you know, trying to keep those guys in rotation because they they cool dudes, man. They they uh, real humble, down to earth, you know. Absolutely. My bad. So, um, tell us about the store. Just unknown how it came to fruition, uh, the vision behind it, uh, the business behind it, where you want to take it, where it's at currently. Um, huh, um unknown. I mean, it, it's really, you know, it kind of speaks for itself. A lot, a lot of the whole. The whole brand was really behind the concept of, you know, I feel like, you know, growing up, being in school, being in, in, in middle school, high school, and, you know, I always had, you know, my older brother was always the dude that everybody knew. Mm-hmm. He was the cool guy. He was, the, like, as soon as I walked into Britain High, oh, you Craig's brother, you Craig's brother, all right, you good. You know what I mean? Like, I had to really try hard to build a name for myself because he already established such a, a, um, such a, a name for, him, for himself 
um, I wanted to take, you know, the people who, the people who are kind of cast under a shadow, or the people that are, you know, in that basement creating something that's probably spectacular that nobody knows. Um, I wanted to spread that light. So with unknown, this is, you know, there's a ton of unknowns in our city. You know what I mean? I wanted to make this that space for that. So if it's art, if it's music, if it's clothing. Um, if it's an event that happens here, poetry slam, whatever it is, I wanted to make this the hub for that. So that's kind of where the entire creative side of this, this came from. That's so. You know what's beautiful about that? That ties into your unfamous situation. Well, I'm a, well, well let, me, let me speak on unfamous. Well, when it comes to unknown though, that had unknown made way before I came up with the concept of unfamous. I basically came up with the concept of unfamous, I threw it in. I threw it into my realm of my We Major, my Me Frosty, and um, and now I got you know unfamous. Unfamous came about because you know I got sick and tired of us regular pe people putting all our our energy into people that don't even respect us. We don't know these famous people we we follow on every day on Instagram. We just see them on TV. We see them online. You know what I'm saying? We emulating their lives. And we, not me per se, but a lot of people feel like their lives are more important than their own. How? You don't even know them. Mm -hmm. They ain't wishing you no happy birthday. They ain't shouting you out. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's okay to be the average Joe Schmo working a nine to five, being an entrepreneur, doing what you got to do for you and yours. So don't put too much focus on famous people because they ain't checking for you, all right? Now your mans, your family, the people that love you, those are the main people you need to be focused on. So that's how I came up with this whole unfamous um, design and movement. All right, so. So uh, one more question for you, M. Dot. Um, biggest obstacles or hurdles in bringing this to fruition? Um, probably, I mean, I would say as far as the fruition side, I don't think there was a huge amount of problems besides maybe design wise because obviously this space didn't look like this but I would say the biggest hurdle we've had since being open obviously is um, has been COVID um, just because you know a lot of the business the fashion in itself a lot of it is built off of people going out going somewhere buying that outfit to go somewhere and look good for their whatever it is and now we don't have that option a lot and more. Right. So now it's like people are more buying comfy clothes, quick buys, you know, t-shirts, hoodies, a uh, couple of hats, whatever it is. So, you know, I think that's the biggest hurdle trying to change your narrative to, to um, you know, help those people for what they need now. It's like a constant evolving niche. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You always have to evolve or, or change at some point. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> what exact year did you uh, start Unknown? Um, we got the keys April 2019. Got the keys here, um, and then we uh, put it together in about four months. Right. It moved really quick. It bubbled up real quick too. Mm. It's like a staple. Even like, even with, even like with, you know, their hoodies and t-shirts, just their logo on it. Like, I mean, when you when you see it, you know where it's from. You know what I'm saying? you know when it started so so before I leave I'm definitely gonna cop me one you know what I'm saying appreciate that appreciate so. that <clears throat> word I grabbed the shirt um so M Dot has that shirt he's actually gonna be yep. raffling that off uh so make sure you're following you know the unknown Instagram page make sure you follow our, our Instagram page um and just be on the lookout he's gonna raffle that off uh very soon um so M Dot, anything you want to tell the people that they don't know? Why don't you tell the people something about you that they do that they wouldn't know? Oh, um, so well, unknown. If if <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> um, I'm, I actually paint um, a lot. What? Uh, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. that's Word. something that a lot of people don't know. I was doing it like hardcore for a couple of years, but then um, I just not fell back. But I li I think I liked doing it more for myself than trying to do it for other people. Right. Once I started doing it for other people, I felt like I lost my way, so. Yeah. Can I take you back over that real quick? See, me and Dad, we got, we got a lot in common. I used to paint too back in the days, but mm. that's why I made the clothes now, because I, I kind of like got out of the paint, because 
you know, I was getting older, I started a family and stuff like that. I didn't have time to like really like be painting and stuff like that. I had to pay freaking bills, baby. You know? <laughs> so the focus wasn't on painting no more, but I still had passion for the art. So I said, you know what, man? I'm just gonna start I'm gonna start putting my art on code. So I design every day and I feel like I can spread my message better that way, you know, everybody walking around like a walking billboard for me, like, mm -hmm. you know, my slogan is the message is in the claw, you know what I'm saying, so if y'all been watching this for a minute, or follow me, you already know that, so yeah, I feel you when you say, you know, you used to paint, but that's what a lot of, some people might not know about you, some people didn't know that about me either, right. mm -hmm. but your boy was talented, <laughs> you know, so I got one more question for you, obviously with you being a DJ, well, I got two questions for you. <clears throat> okay. So being a DJ, right? I, I'm big into collecting vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, you've grown up. I'm sure you had records. Yeah, I know you're using Serato now. At some point in time, I know you use Serato with the vinyl. Mm -hmm. In terms of control, feel, um, what do you prefer? Do you prefer Serato with vinyl records? Do you prefer Serato with the CDJs? Um, do you prefer like, actual vinyl? I like vinyl. I like vinyl itself. And, um, but, you know, with the times now, being able to um, grab any song at any time, Serato vinyls is, is the way. I mean, I actually have those here behind us somewhere, honestly. Word. Um, and last question I have for you, <laughs> and this is you being a DJ. Oh, word. Serato vinyls on deck. <laughs> I wonder what those look like. Those probably scratched to death, huh? Uh, probably, honestly. Beat them in. You still use them? Yeah, those turntables are right there behind you guys. You know, still, still set it up. Oh, okay. No, nah, these are not bad. No, those ain't too bad. They're not trash. <laughs> Um, so one more question, and this is in regards to you being a DJ. So most DJs I know, they into all types of music. Like they don't stick with just the hip hop, the reggae's, all of that. So um, guilty pleasure. Jazz, smooth jazz. Nah, no, 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 no. Jazz, no? That, no, jazz does count? not count. Jazz is hip hop, bro. <laughs> jazz is. I listen to jazz music. That doesn't count. Jazz. But is I'm not talking all. like like your hip hop jazz or your. Your your jazz. We're talking about this. This is the last piece of my Miles Davis. Okay, yeah, okay, come on. That, so that don't count. Okay. <laughs> that's, um. Oh man. You know I'm gonna I open mean, this I question like, up to everybody. I mean I like I, I like alternative music. I, I mean I've always been a fan of that. Just okay. Because I've I've listened to everything from growing up. So. Word. I don't know about a guilty pleasure. I feel like I listen to everything, right? Classical, alternative, yeah. blues, like it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give y'all mine. Y'all gonna laugh. We might not laugh. We might. Are you ready? In sync. Bye bye bye. See, oh, that's not a guilty pleasure. <laughs> it like is, bro. We all used to listen to that at some point, yo. Like, yeah, but you can't have that in your deck now. You look yo. at that like, yo, yeah, it's cool, yo. but yo, you can't play that in the whip with a hundred dudes in the car. The pizza man from Pepino's got the wild system outside. He was rocking the whole in sync. All of like two days ago, with the system windows down, we was ranking on him. But at the same time, he was like, "Bro, anything goes, man." And shit, he better than me, cause if I, if you, I'm in the car by myself with that shit. Come on, <laughs> you singing along? All that? Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Cry me a river too. That was that was another one. Yeah. What you got? What's my guilty pleasure? Um, I don't know either, man. I I uh, I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know, here, hey, dog. Uh, hey, hey, listen, man. Listen, I always, I always, you know, I keep it phone. All right, first off, my man Omarion. That Icebox album. Mm. Fire. That Icebox album. That thing, single was amazing. It's a classic. Two, <clears throat> that's, that's one. Uh, the Bee Gees. Mm. That's two. <laughs> okay. okay. I respect that's it. Two. That's funky. Okay. Uh, 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 I got a few more, yo. Give me, give me a minute here. Give me a minute. Yo, listen, I'm a huge, I'm a huge, and I don't give a damn, I'm a huge in that I equal thing. And I be singing, I feel like I be singing like that when I be in the shower. <laughs> what? That's my girl, man. All right, so that's just a, a few for y'all. Here you go. Uh, I think I got one. Um, My white boy, Bobby Caldwell. You know, <laughs> what you won't do, <laughs> do for love. You found Yo, everything. But that's a banger, Yo, though. That's that's a that shit hella soulful. It definitely is. You know. <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. Um, 
M Dot, we really appreciate you. Now I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come in here and do our thing tonight. Um, mm-hmm. We love the store. You know, like I said, he's gonna be raffling off a shirt. Um, or I shouldn't even say raffle. He's gonna be giving away a shirt uh, that we purchased here today. Um, so just be on the lookout yeah, for that. You got a piece of lint, like a lint. Where? Yeah, just bob, you, know, you got a lint on the other that. side. Yeah. Yeah. How is going? We always got something like that. We want <laughs> to broke this podcast. I mean, you see I'm that? I ain't even got the like, like, it's, it's, you get it. I he's rubbing know? it, and it's still not coming out. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get it off camera. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want him anymore. Like it, 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 it is. It is what it is. Yeah, that's hilarious. Oh man. Got something attached to it. Convenient, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so let me see that. Oh. So, um, our, our guy B Dot got himself yelled at. I shouldn't say yelled at, but he caused some controversy the other day. As usual. Um, so he had put out. There's two lists that went out. He had put out uh, his MVP top ten rappers of 2020. Um, so we got number one, Freddie Gibbs. He gets the gold medal. Uh, Silver, uh, Conway, and then uh, Benny got the bronze, followed by Russ, Big Sean, Lil Baby, Nas, um, Drake. I don't know how the hell Lil Wayne ended up on this Neither list. Neither do I. And Stove God. That's, so, Stove God should be on the list. So. <laughs> he should be on the list. Okay? <laughs> so, hold on. You know what? So, so, so when I, it, here's the thing, though, with the, when it comes to the list. Like, you know, B Dot, Rap Radar. You know, their podcast is pretty plugged in and pretty tuned in with the underground. You know, they they don't have the Griseldas on there. They don't have the uh, the J Rocks, mm-hmm. um, the Rock Marcies. Mm-hmm. You know, they have these people on their podcast. So when you see this, it's kind of like, bro, I thought you was tuned in, like really tuned in with the music. So I, I think sometimes I think he be sometimes I think he do some of this shit, man, for for shock value. Mm. I mean, but even if he didn't, even even if it's not shock value. It's his list, so I respect it. At the end of the day, it's just opinions. But I'm just happy my man up there, though. Shout out to Stove God. Shout out to Stove God. Yeah, man, I ain't going, you know, it's it's, it's, it's his choice. It's his opinion, you know. Um, it's interesting to the most part, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely interesting. Mr. Stead. Yo. Hold on, bro. Oh. Yeah, keep going. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. This is an interesting uh, little list he got here, though. Um, Russ was interesting. I don't really listen to home like that, but I know uh, yeah. it's fairly independent. Especially if it's, like, really, really legit in numerical order like he got yeah. it. You got Russ yeah. at four? Yeah. Whatever. Um, Whatever be that. I really didn't listen to Detroit 2 like that, but I mess with Big Sean. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I can understand little baby, you know he, yeah. he 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 grind crazy. Little baby be snapping. Nas, I suppose. I mean, I don't know. Drake, that's kind of like cliche, typical type ordeal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't, I don't know. Lil Wayne, that was interesting. Stone yeah. God, that, al- that that album was hard. He did he did do his thing. He he definitely like. Rookie of the year, maybe. So, you know what I'm saying? But hold on, hold on. We this gotta, gotta this, this list, though, is just best rappers. Not the actual albums, right? No, this, this is I don't, I don't, yeah. This is strictly yeah. MVP. So oh, yeah. Top. Oh, yeah, okay. MVP, okay. So, apparently, he picked uh, Piss Rock Marciano off. You know what I mean? He basically was talking about Rock was like, yo, you ain't got <laughs> yeah. no West Side Gun on there. I was yeah. about to say that. See, that, that he don't got no West Side right. Gun on there. You ain't got no West Side Gun on there. He, um, then he was basically, somebody else has said, yo, Stove God basically Rookie of the Year. And then he agreed with that. And he was like, you know, me and him, me and Stove God put out a classic. You ain't mentioned that. Yeah. Long story short, he pissed Rock off because Rock was going off on Twitter for like a smooth hour that night. Um, and that just begs the question, like, yo, when these lists get put together and come out, like, should there be two separate lists? Does it? Does there need to be one for mainstream well, and one for underground? When did Rock? Nah, when did man. Rock joint just drop? What the joint with him and Stove God? No. Well, besides that. Well, one. that's what he was referring to. Oh, Rock's latest album. Yeah. Uh, what a month ago, right? So it was like late November. Yeah, so it's possible that when he made this list, Rock didn't drop that other joint, so you know, he probably kind of overlooked the fact that Rock produced that whole joint. You know, what I'm saying, I'm sure he knew. He I mean, he made, I'm he not, made the I'm not list saying, way after Rock's last project just came out. 
But at the same time, dudes like him, they getting these projects. No, I'm not trying to justify. I I definitely think Rock should be on the list. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to say. I'm just trying to show express the duality I I possess. You know what I'm saying? So you playing devil's advocate? I ain't say that, man. I'm just saying I'm putting my shoes. I'm putting. You know what I'm saying? In B dot shoes, and trying to see it through his eyes. You know what I'm saying? And that's. Possibly what could well, happen. You know what I'm saying? He not holler at us, man. I know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was yet, but holler at us. Let's have a conversation about this, man. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, a lot of people get, you know, butt hurt and tight about these lists. I don't care if there's one list, two lists. Yeah. I don't care if a million people have a list. It's all personal perspective. You know what I'm saying? It's right. all personal opinion. Because my, my list wouldn't look anything like that. But like I said earlier, I got gassed because I seen Stove got up there and it's like, okay, if B Dot is actually even acknowledging Stove got, that means his album made some noise. Right. Like people are tuning in. And that's good. Yeah, y'all know the Stove got been on everything lately. He on Boldy's exactly. new project. Cause he nice. Uh, he been on. He I just noticed like lately. On a, I think he on Ransom new project too. Crime scenes. He on there. He on Boldy's new project. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. 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 He's rookie man, rookie of the year. Yo, you know what I you know what I think is funny too, and I noticed um I noticed this the other day with Boldy James latest project. He got that upstate connection on there now. It's just not funny to me that he said I don't think it's a coincidence that he signed the Griselda. Now you got Stove God on your album. Now you got um Riggs and Mook on your album. You know what I mean? Like you got Mayhem Loren on your album. Like you know, obviously Mayhem been rocking with Griselda forever. So I was just listening to Willie Pearls. Um today and yesterday and it's just like you know all these underground cats man you can't even really say like you know what i love about them too you can't even really say like who's the best or whatever because mm-hmm. they all just got like their own style and it's just like exactly they all just like so like hard you know and just gotta appreciate it yeah sure. yeah and the originality is amazing on the yeah. underground right now um, so B Dot, he followed that 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 MVP list up with his um, top ten best albums of the year. Yeah. Um, so we got Alfredo at number one from King to a God. Number two, yeah. uh, he got Reasonable Drought on there, Stove God. Then he got Burden of Proof, mm-hmm. um, King's Disease. Then we got Detroit Two, Lil Baby, My Turn, uh, West Side, Pray for Paris, um, Larry June, Keep Going, hey, hey, hey. and Jack Harlow. Uh, that's what they all say. So I think I only I didn't listen to one, two, three out of ten projects on here. I haven't heard. Um, how do you guys feel about the list though? The the, the actual album list. Is it in the group chat? Well, uh, I didn't listen I to I like yeah yeah three out of ten ish. Mm-hmm. I skimmed through Detroit too. Like I told y'all, I ain't ever hear little baby John. Uh, nor did I hear Jack Harlow's. I do know who. I was about to say, are you a Jack Harlow fan? I thought you said you um, listened to him. Nah, not like that. Um, he's straight, though. You know right. what I'm saying? I do like how he uh, puts his stuff together and articulates himself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like I like his whole rhyme schemes and all that and, and his content and everything. And, you know, he, he decent. I just haven't really took the time to get into him or whatever. But, you know, I'm definitely appreciating that he got Larry June on there. Um, can I even remember anything from Keep Going? No, keep going. Hit me late. I'm not gonna lie. Like I didn't listen. Give it its its respect right away. I ain't gonna I lie. Didn't Larry, to Larry dropped uh, and so I didn't listen much to Jack that it kind of mixes in together. You know what I'm saying? So I can't even lie to you. I can't think of anything gonna keep going right now. But um, I got Larry you. definitely, Larry definitely had a. Had, I know <clears> one of them albums this year was banging, and I don't know if it was that one. So you know what I'm saying? He definitely, Larry had a year overall. Yeah, he definitely should. I would, you know, if he was my list, he would be up there a little higher, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, yeah, I'll I pass the mic. You know what I'm so, any late additions that came out recently, would, would they go in your top ten? Um, of course. Marcy's going in my top ten. That That's a movie. I just, I'm not even going to lie to you. That's a movie to me. Yeah. Um, I'd probably put Ransom, one of Ransom's projects in there because he's been on a tear too, bro. Like, even this new crime scenes project, it's, it's bananas. Yeah. Um, J. Royale's making that list, you know, now that I'm, you know. Finally listen I, to that Bust the Bus. Yo, Bust's yeah. album is definitely going on that list. Yeah, I would, put, um, that, I would put, um, uh, I would put, um, I would put, um, damn. 
my God. Damn. My guy. <laughs> my guy had um. Damn, my guy had two projects out this year that was that was banging. Um. Ah, I'm going blank right now. So it's too much music. Um. It happens, man. It happens to the best. Pass of me. Listening. It'll come to me. Pass I'm me. saying. <laughs> um, what you doing on there? Just rough. Just the rough. Uh, two, three albums you could think of off the top. I know you mentioned Larry. Oh, Sky Zoo. Sky Zoo. Oh yeah. Sky Zoo put out two projects this this year that was off the chain. So it's 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 difficult. No, what was the second project? I remember he put he was out supposed he put to drop, out, but I don't remember seeing anything he, after that. I'm gonna tell you right now. He put out. He put out. Uh, I know there was the joint, the father theme joint. The father, the joint he put out before the father. Uh, the Retropolitan. Retropolitan. That was this year. That was this year. Damn. Hold on, let me double, let me double check. I feel like. Hold on. Let's double check that real quick. I don't, I don't like when we get caught up with lying. <laughs> Listen, we some uh, brokers podcast, you know, but we do, we, we do. Our oh do- no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was Milestones and it was Blue Note. The bluest note, excuse me. Yo, the bluest note was hard, yo. Mm. The bluest note was so smooth. I got a mic. The bluest note was so smooth. I, I pulled it up right now. He got six joints on there. Mm. And um, I honestly feel like that got overshadowed by Milestones. Shit, it didn't. It, listen, it, it kind of did, but I was listening to both of them, like, you know, uh, back to back because the bluest note only had six tracks on there. So you could. You take the six tracks from um from that joint and then you add it to the seven tracks that he got on no milestone exactly so just, with the two so just throw them joints on um you know throw them joints on on auto shuffle and you're good to go uh some additions i probably add um definitely uh west i love uh who made the sunshine that was good. That yeah. joint. Um, my man Mike, Weight of the World, Arm and Hammer. Damn, I forgot the name of that joint. I think it's called Shrines. Um, who else? Ka. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ka's album belongs on it. Honestly, that, that, for me, that's got the rock. number one spot. So it's not even fair. We can't. We, yeah, we can't I mean, going you know. We already passed ten. That's what I'm saying. I'm just so saying. That's like, why you can't get mad at nobody's list. Nah, I ain't, you know I'm not. Saying? Like so I said, I'm not necessarily man, I'm not mad, mad at Ruffles Feathers, but I just think it's you know when people. I, he just seemed like he was more tapped in with that I underground just, you know, scene. Not necessarily that everything was bad on additions. there. I just don't. Maybe you would think right. And it's, it's shocking that him leaving out the majority of artists that he's always bigged up in the past right or like you said earlier have come on you know their pod and has some you know great sit down interviews and stuff like that you would have thought that a lot more of them would have been on his list but whatever at the end of the day he don't got no real ties to them they ain't family you know what i'm saying <laughs> like it's, it's just his point of view you know it is what it is my man mock too man yeah. It's old, but he dropped that that fete des conversé, aka you know that <laughs> that's that uh, he, I think that's that Haitian stuff he be talking about. You know what I'm saying he dropped that album like I told y'all last time. That joint, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just fire, man. You know what I'm saying? I love Mark. I love how he does his thing. How he puts it down. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Uh, real, real. I don't know how you describe the the sound like. But um, it's kind of got like a, a brokenness to it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And he twists a little bit of the uh, Haitian uh, dialect up in there and all that, which makes it very interesting because he's big into his culture or whatnot. It's kind of like Bodega Bams with the Spanish. Yeah. He's always throwing the Spanish stuff in there. Crime Apple, too. I don't know if Crime Apple is. He's Colombian. He's Colombian. He's Colombian, okay. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what is an interesting thing I thought of today since I'm thinking of it now? Is that a lot of these new dudes that I got put on, like Crime Apple, uh, I got put on a dude named Rome Streets. Um, who else? Not Bodega Bams, but. Um, Rome Streets, he rock with a lot of people, like a lot of spitters. Uh, the dude SD Knack. Mm. 
Westside put me on to a lot of these dudes, man. He do. From, you know what I'm saying? And and they be nice, yo. Like, that be, yo. That's why I've been telling cats, man. Wes, Wes a dude, man. Like, so, I got a question for you. Yeah. And only I'm the only reason I'm excluding you because I know you just got yeah. put on a Willie recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Capital Gains or Deutsche Marks, too? I'm not picking either or, man. They both nice. And, um. So, you want to hear something interesting? I just found out about it. What? They were both recorded at the same time. I could hear that. Exactly. Yeah, I but you can hear, hear it, but it's still so different, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I like how it, the, the whole it, the capital gains, it definitely goes with the whole, you know what I'm saying, concept of whatever you want to call it and whatnot. It has a lot of money talk, capitalization type talk. Yep. Um, Willie, in an interview, he expressed how, like, he has a lot of ownership and a lot of different entities as far as, like, he own a club. They ain't, I thought it was open already, but it's not. Nah, he own a club. He got the wine, the vodka. He got a wine, yep. He got a vodka that's in, like, 250, yep. you know what I'm saying? He own a DSP. Yep. That's Only so. dude. Only besides, rapper, yeah, besides, besides Ho. Ho. Any independent, yeah. so. Um, you know and saying? then he owned some other stuff like it was like uh, some freedom joint where he's trying to get like uh, convicts or ex felons involved in like the tech industry. Okay. So home, he 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 moving, well, he know, moving he and shaking. Put you under the word recidivism. Recidivism, <laughs> ostentatious. <laughs> um, couple other big words. I don't learned a lot of big words from Willie on the low. Between him and Rock, they definitely not helped me expand my vocab. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Um. One of them said paradigm recently. I think it might have been rock, and I had to look it up and then ended up using know, it in a sentence. I know Willie has in his past music. So, you know, yeah. He's been using, you know, saying words that, you know, expand my vocabulary, rock to. And honestly, man, that's where I expand a lot of my vocabulary is rap, is rap dog. Yeah, like, that's how it's always been for me. You hear something, and you got to Google it, look it up, yeah. know how to use it in the right context. Mm. Um. So staying on this top ten album, let me ask you this: What was the most influential album for you this year? It don't even necessarily have to be in your top ten, but something that just like really stuck with you, or like gave you, put you in that certain mood or, or feeling right. that you wanted to be in. I'm not answering this question. You, know, you, you already know my answer. <laughs> so you want me to go on to something else then? No, I'm just because right. you already know my answer. Yeah. I've been saying it for too long. You already know my answer. So so rookie of the year then and then absolutely hands down absolutely rookie of the year did it for you. I heard that album. I said, listen, man. So the funny thing is, I felt the same way when I heard that album. Is the same way he kind of like titled. He he used it. He spun the the reasonable doubt. He spun reasonable doubt and called his joint reasonable drop. I remember the I remember the day. To the T when I heard Ho's uh, album. What? To the T. I remember going to high school. He, actually, he in another line recently, another verse, right. Home had made a comment about that should have went uh, quadruple platinum or something. Easy, he been saying that. Right. It should have. It was way ahead of yeah, his time. It, line, it was way no ahead of there. his time. Reasonable doubt, classic, should have went triple. In this, in this, in this down, Stove so. Guy album. That reason, that reasonable drought, is ahead of his time. I'm telling. In about three years, I got everybody gonna be like, "Yo, what is, what this guy come from, bruh?" Telling you, tell, mark my word, I'm telling you. Yo, so so, just piggy, piggybacking off of that though, the last two years, bro, coke rap, I feel like that shit been on a uh, uptick. Between Yo, your, your Benny's, your Freddy's, your listen, Stove Gods. And I'm not even mad at it. Your Pusha T's. No, I'm not mad I'm at not it at all. It's fun. It. Like, I love the creativity involved Yo, in it. Even if, it, even if it's lies to me, I don't care because it's yeah, art. I just, <laughs> if, if, it's, if it's factual, cool. That's what you did in your past. Cool. If it's lies, cool. I'm just entertained. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's all entertainment for me, baby. Good. Yeah, we got keep going. Well, hey, Merry Christmas, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Merry Christmas. You know, and that, and that, and that's that, that's 
A double entendre, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ooh, more ways than Christmas with the uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. That's ho funny. ho ho, lots of snow. No, but seriously though, like if you think about it, like obviously the underground scene, I feel like it's just it's bubbling and just like that traditional hip hop is really making a big comeback. So on top of that, vinyl sales have surpassed CD sales. I'm going to just throw that in there, just kind of randomly. Um, so when you see that resurgence of just like traditional hip hop, that East Coast hip hop, Riddy, whatever you want to call it, and then you see like this Coke rap coming back in, like, and it's not like, don't get me wrong, you know, everybody be like, damn, how many times can Flish, Pusha T flip a Coke rhyme? Keep doing it, because we love it. But then you getting it from other dudes too. So you getting it from your Bennies, your, your Freddies, your, your Stove Guards, and they all coming from a different perspective with it. Yeah, I don't know if you remember. I don't know if it was the last podcast or the one before that, but that's what I was telling you about the dude Rio mm. from uh, Flint. They, they from Flint too. If I messed up and said they was from Detroit in the in the last joint, but um, yeah, he was saying that man. You, that's what it is. You gonna keep saying the same thing. It's how you gonna reinvent how to say it. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying to flip that joint. He said that's the art in it right there. It's very true. You know what I'm saying? Because you only live one life, so... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's oh so many, like, years you're going to continue to do that type of activity and still do music. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, but, I mean, if you think about it from a standpoint, just being a rapper, period. If you Even if you're not doing just the coke shit, if you're just rapping about the streets or just being a tough guy or whatever, like... You got to reinvent yourself or just be rec- recreate how you say things over and over. Right. And, and, Exactly, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's oh so many times you could like just keep that type of ordeal of oh I'm selling this and doing that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know. Okay, now nah, it's just your imagination and you yeah, stretching. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. You talking just about it in in, in past tense. Exactly. Yeah, but if you're talking about it, it's like the new current. Like we one, we know you lying, and two, you're stupid if you really. Doing it's, what you're spitting. <laughs> you exactly. Like, that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be a kid and whole, have a family and, <laughs> you know, what at it the is, same time, what it is, is, is trying to be a with that whole With that whole perspective of that rap, I believe is when you get fact checked, like, or, or background, like, yo, your shit better be valid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to have some type of solidification in that type of ordeal like or, before you could can be like yo I, I i'm a dude you i don't think you could just come out doing coke rap that type of drug rap and you you, you ain't never do that you know what but makes in you- the same sense i don't know because you had a lot of those like young dudes like uh what was that white dude name slim jesus slim jesus and things <laughs> like that so nowadays i don't know but you know what but, you, but how much do you care though? I mean, I don't care at all. Like that. Yeah. That. I mean, I could kind of like. I mean, I care actually, but I don't care that. And, and no, if I it, care. So uh, no, here's I care. if it sounds if it sounds good though. Actually. Like, will you really be hurt? If you found out your favorite MC never killed anybody, it's, it's or not, never sold eighty that. kilos, it's just, it's just more so of like. The honesty behind it and how much you know is like being stretched with imagination type ordeal. Like I, I, I really don't. I really don't care. For me, I no, watched. No, I, listen, I do don't care. care. I watched WWF for years, man. You know what I'm saying? When I was young, I thought it was real. Right? Didn't we all? Of course. But then, when I found out it was Fugazi, I wasn't hurt. It's an art, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, it's an art. It's an art. But them dudes who wrestle, they got some type of professionalism behind it, you know what I'm saying? And passion behind it. So I think when you got Coke right, there's passion behind it that you done went through that struggle. Yeah, so but I, 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 feel like we put, I feel like we put too much pressure on these artists, though. But that's in general. For, with we're trying to keep it too of... real. You keep it too real, you're going to lose your career. You can't nah, sell a million records. Hard one year and then the next year be like yo you know what man i know i just sold a million records but i'm about to go pop somebody in the head just to show that i'm real yo. <laughs> just the clout chase I, yeah I, I need that for this next album i'm about to just go you know what i'm about to just go pop a pregnant woman yo for no reason like come on man please so, 
a tweet I saw online. It um it basically said um flexing in hip hop is a is a is a cancer, more or less a leading uh, saying that flexing is a can- it's a cancer killer in our culture. But I mean, in regards to the music, like my thing is, you know what? Dudes is probably hustling. They may not be like they probably don't do it on the scale that they saying in, in these songs. Like you might have flipped a bird or two. You may not be fucking seeing two hundred keys at a time, but. I feel like to me that's where the that's where the art comes into the art side of it comes in. Think about all the goddamn mob movies we don't watched or mm-hmm. you know action movies, you know all that type of shit that we don't watch. Yeah, a lot of that shit ain't real. Or you might associate an actor with a certain role, like Al Pacino with Scarface. You're always gonna associate him with Scarface. So I just look at it as they painting movies. You know what I mean? This is it's just just definitely a movie they painting painted. pictures. Right? Yeah, they yeah, painting yeah, pictures. Yeah, so yeah. it don't necessarily have to be factual, but at least just be a stand up guy in some sense. Exactly. Like, but in the same sense, like, well, don't you know talk that tough shit. Like, you can't be rapping like a dark low or like a a, a flash and, or these other okay, guys. Exactly. And somebody that's kind of on you. That's kind of more so what I meant. You know Jesse Owens. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's like what I'm it's at. just more so like you know, be real upon who you trying to be and portray in this <clears> rap <throat> world. You know what I'm saying? Like. I don't care if you skateboarding or whatever, um, but you can't tell me no skateboarding tricks. You know what I'm saying? Or what not of, uh, or if that's the rap you going for. You get what I'm saying? Like, you got to have some background and factualness to it. Like, I, I just don't want you rapping just because, okay, I'm going to go to this shit hot right now. I'm going to go that lane. And that's more so what I'm talking about. Like, we did have a Slim Jesus. And I said I didn't care, but I had to really think about that. Like, damn, I do care. Cause, like, you know why I didn't care? Because he didn't lie about it. He told you but this exactly, is entertainment. That's why I'm like, I, that's why I had to think about it. Like, oh, I don't care. But at the same time, I do care. Be, and you're right. He, he was honest about it, which made it to the point of, like, yeah, it ain't that big of a deal. Margaret's no thought. I don't care. <laughs> okay? I don't. <laughs> I know that shit sound crazy hey, yo, for so me. You don't, so let me ask you this. Some, somebody run down on your favorite rapper, right? Or just a rapper you like. And somebody be like, yo, run me a fair one. Um, and let's just say they ain't got nothing to lose. And it's like, nope, take off running. Not like they're getting jumped or none of that. Like, do you respect or not respect somebody for standing on their own two feet? I don't care. Perfect example. Perfect. Is, I'm going to give you all a perfect example. Right now, it's like... Besides six nine, it's like the biggest like clown in the industry. Most would say is like Ja Rule, but I guarantee, I guarantee, won't don't as you can see, don't nobody want to go toe for toe, hit for hit with Ja Rule because he nice. He got classic albums, and most folks is scared to get embarrassed by his by his catalog. <laughs> his catalog ja, ja, ja will got smash hit. a lot of people's catalogs. You could call you could call him a sucker all you want. You could call him a clown, but you won't go hit for hit with him. I tell you that, and I'm standing on that. And once again, I don't care. That's it. He said he care. don't care. He don't care, and it's a ho 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 and a whole lot of snow. I don't care who does it. I don't care. There's right. an Earl Sweatshirt <laughs> right, yo, internet clip where he's doing a similar thing of saying I don't my care. Mother, my mother's sixty years old. If she was nice at rapping at 60, she talking about popping guns, doing whatever she, whatever. If it sound good, cool. Go ahead, grandma. Go ahead, mom. I don't care. If it's, if it's lies, I don't care. As long as it sound good, if I, if I catch saying? a vibe. She probably, she probably did pop some guns. <laughs> if you I can saying? catch a vibe, yo, I don't care. I don't care. Well, she witnessed some guns being popped. You know what I'm saying? She oh, probably helped clean them. <laughs> something. She got rid of the body. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> now, let's, let's move it along. Um, we got to get to that album. Yeah, too. so Muggs dropped a um, new album called Winter. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So, we've me, me and uh, Mr. Lightskin over here kind of agreed who had the best record on this album. Right? The whole album's fire, by the way. Yeah. But how funny is it that he had one of the best records on the album, mm-hmm. and one of his and the album's name is Winner, and he might be the oldest individual on the album. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> he has one of the top five best verses in hip hop of all time. Mm-hmm. We established that. And the name of the record is Winter Wars. We established that. So you get off and kill a, a body of track called Winter Wars. Now you want an album called Winner, and you went. Ape shit on this out al- on this particular record. Shout out to Muggs because Muggs has been doing this thing. 
he had a nice resurgence, I want to say back in like 2016 or 17. Uh, you know, putting out projects like Ito, Rock. Um, he put out a project with a lot of people. You know, this compilation project. He had the Day of the Dead. You know, he's just been doing his thing consistently. Uh, man, he put out projects with Mayhem as well. But this album, uh, there's some tracks on there I really, really enjoy. I mm -hmm. got to pull it out so I can give you all the stats real quick. Mm -hmm. Unless you got them. Unless one of y'all got it up already. Y'all want to get it up? I got it up. Okay, yeah, you want to give it the rundown? Too. Go ahead, give it the rundown for, you know, track you, listing. You got so. it up too? Yeah. Ahead, All right, you know, DJ Muggs, <laughs> winner, release date, December 18, 2020. It was 24 minutes, 5 seconds, nice, quick joint, booyah, booyah, boom, 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 you know, and then I'm out the room. That type of boy there. Go get you a sandwich and some lemonade. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Muggs, thank you. Thank you for giving us a complete track listing. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming exactly. you had to spend a little couple extra dollars yeah. to get that all on there, but thank you. Yeah. Um, and like they said, it, it got Boldy James on there, Capadonna, RLX, Rome Streets, Mayhem Loren, Ito, Crime Apple, That's Boyaka Boyaka, mm -hmm. Hologram, Al Divino, and um, DJ Muggs himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And how many tracks was it? Nine. <laughs> 24 minutes, five seconds, nine tracks. You do the, you know, yeah. Nice listen right there. You but know. This album, it, it gives you that winter feel. It's a cold album. Like, this is definitely for the car, you know, bundled up. I, I enjoyed it. I love the artwork, too. If uh, Did you just say that or not? Nah? No, no, no. Nah, the artwork, the artwork, is, artwork is nice. And his, his artwork, it kind of stays with that same theme, though, too. But I like the color pattern, and 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 the red brings out the blue, you know, little garment they got on what or whatnot, which just gives me a winter vibe. You know what I'm saying? But um, let's talk about that track though, because we ain't mentioned the name yet. I didn't think that was the best track on the joint. Um, but uh, you ain't think Capadonna bodied that? Nah, he definitely bodied it. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? As a as a Repetitive listen off the first straight through, you know what I'm saying? Which one I would uh, try to jump. I don't know if it's track four or five. I don't know if it's the wrong. I think it's RLX joint, though. But don't quote me on that. It could be Rome Streets joint, too. I don't know. Word. But it's out of one of them. For me, it goes three, six, and then four. Could, uh, I actually yeah. like the joint with Hologram. Resume. I like that too, shockingly, because I feel like Hologram, you know, Mayhem Brother, he wanted them dudes like I only want to hear him as a feature, mm -hmm. but I was like, okay, this is this is cool. But I can't knock it. you know, ask me in a week and I'll have a whole different answer for you because that's just how it be. You know, things will resonate on you in different ways. Yo, Cap, thanks for thanks for rapping for the for the old man. You know, you're a 50 plus year old rapper, full gray beard, full gray beard, still in the game, still in the game, killing shit. Mm -hmm. He bodied this. Yeah. I don't got nothing to say. I don't, that's it. I don't got nothing to say about that. All right, so mugs. Wow, winter. Make sure y'all check that out. Um, what else y'all listening to? Like I said, I got that ransom. Um, crime scenes. It's him and uh, Nick Craven. I think is on the production. Um, that was fire. He got some. Uh, he got Stove God is on this project. He got Stove God on here twice and uh, Flea Lord. This is seven tracks, twenty one minutes. But I feel like everything ransom put out this year. He put out like three projects this year. Um, they were all short like this, but this man's resurgence is beautiful. Like, yeah. his flow is, oh, my God. That, that's all I can say. Um, I'm trying to think. I, other than that, I think I'm just waiting for that Interstate 38. That's, I think those are the only two new projects I added to the to the mix. Yeah, um, I agree. So, being that it's... Yo, matter of fact, last time, the last uh, joint... Uh, my bad, I cut you off. No, no, no. Um, but yo, I wanted to say we ain't talk about that Benny track, yo, or did we? Which one? At three thirty nah, in the, Houston. Nah, the one he just dropped. Nah. Oh, go ahead, go in. Yo, we, I wanted to say that about. I'm, uh, you know, I want everybody to talk. Um, you know what I'm saying? I just, uh, I, I, I was on some last um episode joint. Um, I wanted to mention that. I don't know why I didn't. I just, I think it slipped my mind. But um. Yeah, man, I thought that was a crazy and uh, real uh, interesting track. You know what I'm saying? How he came into that. and uh, That's on the movie soundtrack, too. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. See, so they, you know, delving yeah, into they, that, they, man. They said, um, it's, I think he produced that whole joint. 
Yeah, basically, they, they, him and uh, Westside, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if Conway's in the movie, but they putting so out they their own. Movie? Yeah, they got a yeah. movie coming out conflict, called Conflicted, and uh, basically this made the, the album soundtrack. But Home was talking his shit. Did y'all catch the concert? I didn't watch it because it was family time for me. So. Gotcha. I didn't get to see it. I missed it. I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I fell had, asleep. Had a little Django action going off. You know, you know your boy won. Nah, I just so want y'all to, you know, express yourself on how you feel about that 330 in Houston track. You know what I'm saying? I mean, given Benny's character, I felt like that record was coming regardless. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, I just felt like it was coming. It was expected. Um, I thought he went off on the record. What about the speed in, in which it came? Because oh, I, I thought I, I knew it was expected too, but I feel like he came double back real quick. Mm. Like it was. He had a line on there, and I can't remember it now. And it, it um, it's basically a long, long. I forget. I can't remember it, but more or less, like my man, why is you wearing two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of jewelry in Walmart? Yeah. In the hood, on top of it, and you're not <laughs> on your home turf. Yeah. Like I get it, you should be able to be comfortable anywhere, and you got your peoples with you. But it's just like. At certain times, just like, you know, it's just unnecessary. You gotta like reevaluate that risk. Is it worth it at that point in time? You know, put that away. Just walk around regular. When it's time for you to hit the stage, your video appearances, do what you gotta do. Pull the shines back out. That's just my thought process, at least. I'm not saying he a punk. Like you ain't gotta be a punk, but it's just like take it off so you're not drawing some unnecessary attention or unnecessary conflict, like what happened. Um, but yeah, two hundred fifty thousand on your neck in Walmart. I got no comment on that. Okay. <laughs> you don't agree, or you you feel like you about to go in way too uh, hard? Yeah, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to feel like the grumpy old man. Like, gotcha. I don't. I, I okay. Do that. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't be me. You, you never. Maybe he didn't really trust the people that he's with. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable leaving all his shit somewhere with, you know, uh, the individuals he was with. So he had to keep it all on body. But then again, I went. I don't think I would ever wear that much jewelry in the first place. Mm-hmm. But whatever. Do you do you feel it was like on some karma stuff? Nah, I don't. I don't really. I don't really. You not superstitious nah. and whatnot, like nah, nah, none of that. Nah, like. Don't have me sounding like just press the button. Alright, yep, we're recording. We're good. Yeah, so y'all ain't I ain't gonna try to let y'all treat me like uh you know the grumpy you know grandpa, but it happened. Cause I'ma be honest with you. Like, hey, we gotta look at it like this too. We all got family members we don't trust. Absolutely. Even though we can have them, you know, in our own presence sometimes, our own circumference, at the end of the day, you still in the back of your mind you say, Hey yo, listen. We gotta watch that motherfucker. <laughs> <Definitely. laughs> Don't leave nothing out. <laughs> hide this, hide that. Word. I got love for him. He family, but listen. Don't have. Don't leave nothing out that so and so is gonna be tempted to. We don't know. Could have been that too. Let me just keep all my jewelry on because I know I got so and so around. He little hungry. He or she. So you know, and then he ended up getting God. And then you can look at it like this too. The promoters that got you out in a certain area, they could line you up too. They could True. want that paper back that they just paid you. Like, okay, so and so just left me. He going here. Listen, I need that bread back. I, could, I really can't afford that right now. Can y'all can y'all get that back for me? I give you five percent. I give you ten percent if you get that back. But I need that back. You just never know. It's very true. The world we live in is grimy, baby. It's grimy. It's a business, man. The world we live in is a business. Or, um, yeah, I guess let's wrap it up then. You know, we got to go all get the family time. Merry Christmas. Word, Merry Christmas. That's right around the corner. Um, next episode, I guess we'll finally dive into, you know, end of the year, put our list together and uh, have at it from there, even though the people truly know what we're doing. Um, per usual, make sure y'all share this video, like this video, comment, subscribe. Uh, big shout out to M Dot. big shout out to Unknown. Um, what is it, 18 Main Street, right? 18 Main Street, New Britain, Connecticut. Uh, make sure y'all come check him out. If you can't check him out, hit him up on Instagram, um, at Unknown Clothing. You guys have a website? UnknownClothing.us. UnknownClothing.us. Um, make sure you, you know, place your orders on there if you don't want to come in store. But support this man. They got some fly shit in here. Um, 
you know, hopefully him and Mr. DCYOP link. I'm going to just throw it out there because, you know, he needs his stuff in here too. Um, you know, hopefully that'll come to fruition. I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm trying to make them do business together. I'm trying to force a relationship here. <laughs> hey, you don't, hey, you don't have to force nothing. I already know. Uh, Merry I gotta Christmas. Take the mask off for this, and I've been wanting to say this. Now that I have, the, I've, I've been wanting to say this for a minute too. Like, and I don't care what nobody think, man. Like New Britain, hands down, got like the most hustlers. Just Factual. Most, you know what I'm saying? The most entrepreneurs, the most people just trying to go get it, man. Factual. Like hands down, call, I don't care what you say at me. That's it. <laughs> I got to get social media. <laughs> uh, we love y'all, man. Uh, definitely, like I said, check out Unknown Clothing, um, DCYOP Clothing, Unfamous. We major. You know, that ain't going to change. Make sure y'all check Homeboy out. Um, shirts, y'all want one, holla at us. Um, dot, I got to get you a shirt. Like I said, next week when I'm back in New Britain, I'm going to bring it to you. Holla at them so they can then you can holla at me. Word. Um, enjoy your holidays. We love you guys. Brokers Podcast, you know. Peace. Hold on, let me put the ski mask down before we go. Please don't. With the glasses. <laughs> with the glasses. <laughs> Do it with the glasses. Hold on. Here we go. Ah, hold on. <laughs> glasses over yeah. or under? Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it to him? <laughs> Mr. Merry Christmas, why are you doing it to him? There we go. There we go. Now I can see you when I rob your ass. Oh, <laughs> man. Yo, why you got my man looking like Blank Man, B? <laughs> J5. Yo, peace. We love y'all, man. <laughs>